What up, YouTube? I am your host, Mediocre Tutorials and Reviews, back in here with yet one more video. All right, guys, countering the conspiracy to destroy black boys. This is by Dr. Jawanza Kunjufu. This recording comes from 1987, so excuse the resolution. However, I started watching this one and I said to myself, I have to bring this up here. I have to bring this up here. Probably a little bit differently than what I have reacted to before. However, I'm also gonna let this play a little bit longer as well. Um, the amount of information per second is astounding. And I think one thing you're gonna appreciate or maybe not appreciate is how much that he's saying is still true today, 30 plus years later, okay? Without further ado. There's no topic that concerns me more than the one on the conspiracy to destroy black boys. And the reason is when our little boys are in preschool and primary grades, they're very innocent and very enthusiastic about learning. But something happens to that, and we need to find out what that is. My younger son is on the cover of this particular book, and I would like for him to grow up to be a man. Like many of you already told me, that you have sons and male students as well. Now, there's two parts of the conspiracy, volume one, and this is volume two. In volume one, we raise four questions. First question is, when did the conspiracy start? Who is against black boys? Why is there a conspiracy against them? And what exactly is the conspiracy? That's in volume one. In volume two, we look at the relationships between mothers and their sons. That must be studied. We also must look at female teachers and black male students. That must also be studied. We must look at some case studies. In other words, many of us are doing a very good job developing black boys to be men. What is it that some of us are doing that others are not doing? And then last but not least, a program called the Rites of Passage in the Manhood. See, it used to be we knew when black boys became men. But now many of us don't know when we're men. It's how much reefer we smoke, how much wine we drink, how many babies we make. Until black men spell it out to black boys what it means to be a man, this conspiracy will continue. But let's go back to volume one. When did it start? And as we begin to look at that, I want to also share with you why we call it a conspiracy to destroy black boys. You see, contrary to belief at birth, there are more black boys born in the world than there are girls. It's close, but it's 1.03 black boys born in the world to 1.0 black girls. Yeah. Hear me clearly. At birth, black boys outnumber black girls 1.03 to 1.0. A brief 18 Not years much. later, it is now 1.0 available. And that's the key word, available black men, to 1.8 available black women. Almost two adult women for every one adult man. Now, the only question that should be going through your minds right now what is what happened. We keep raising the wrong question. We keep asking, why do black men hang on corners? Why do black men lack direction? When you ask this question, you're asking the question 18 to 30 years too late. It is not a conspiracy to destroy black men. It's a conspiracy to destroy black boys. If you destroy them as a boy, he'll never become a man. And I can look around the room and tell you know where are they. If they are not available to black women, where are they? Call the roll. In jail, in jail there are 329,000 brothers in prison right now. One of every four brothers will go to prison. Where else? Or, or death, death. There's numerous ways that we die. There's homicide, suicide, drugs, war, high blood pressure, and the leading killer among black men, lung cancer. Our love for cigarettes, especially cool. Smoke them all day long, die the exact same way. Cool. Where else? It's crazy to think um, that cigarettes back in 1987 was that impactful. Um, that's about the only thing that I've watched during this that still is not true today. But if you look at those numbers, the ratios between men and women, um, that's relatively the same as today in 2020, which is incredible. Um, so even when we had researchers back in the day, you know, 30 some odd years ago, 30 uh, plus years ago, uh, even though we, they've identified kind of what are the symptoms and what are the issues and what are the causes, there still has been not enough done to curb the numbers that we see. Let's keep going. We have prison, death. What else to make us unavailable to black women? Yes, homosexuality. Uh, as you said earlier, one of every nine men in this country are homosexual. Where else? Yes. Hospitalized, institutionalized. Okay, so institutionalization, and there's not only in terms of hospitals, but also mental institutions, and of course, when they get released, many times being homeless. There's still one other large popular area. Thimby? They marry white women. Okay, interracial marriages. Now, I want to pause there for a moment, because you would think if anybody is going to marry outside the race, 
it would be black, black women. women. You got two black women for every one black man. Mm -hmm. But it's been me pointed out, it's exactly the opposite. There are 164,000 interracial marriages, of which 116,000 are brothers. That means 48,000 sisters. It's almost a two to one ratio of black men to black women marrying outside the race. But remember, as you said in the earlier workshop, if the definition of beauty is light skin, long hair and blue eyes, why stop with Renee, the light skinned sister? Why not get you the real thing? There's some serious problems here. And then black men tell me, I can't find a black woman to understand me. You mean out of 20 million black women, you can't find one to understand you? You don't need a white woman, you need a psychiatrist. <laughs> But that's another workshop on relationships. But I just want to share with you, we got some very serious problems. But to tease this audience, black women are tired of being by themselves. And in the earlier issue of Essence Magazine, the article said, guess who's coming to dinner now? Mm -hmm. Black women are tired of being by themselves. In other words, brothers, you can't have it both ways. You can't have two black women to choose from and still marry a white woman. You can't have it both ways. Black women are tired of being by themselves. Now, that's the, with regards to the stats, why we wrote the book, because we saw the shortage of black men. But what we want to begin to find out is, when did it start? You see, it's called the fourth grade syndrome. Studies show that black boys may be the best students in the country up until the fourth grade. So we wanted to find out what your son or male student was doing at the beginning of the third grade, then at the end of the seventh grade, and then measure the progress. Let me give you three examples. We had a little boy five years ago on an Alba reading test score at the 98th percentile in the country. In other words, a walking genius. That means only 2% male, female, white or black had a higher score than he at the beginning of the third grade. At the end of seventh grade, the same boy now drops down to the 35th percentile. Engineer potential here, pimp or pusher now, scores should have improved five years, instead they only improved 1.3. Two more examples. We had a little boy at the 92nd percentile he dropped down to the 24 percentile, and this score has only improved 2.1. But let me give you the average example. We had a little boy at the 63 percentile. He dropped down to the 4 percentile, and this score didn't improve a year, a month, a week, not even a day. There are three critical stages in black boys' development. Infancy to 9, 9 to 13, and 13 to 18. You see, it's easy to see the negative behavior here when he's already dropped out later by some street corner lacking direction. It's more difficult to see it around nine years of age, when they begin to sit further in the back of the class, when they begin to ask less questions, when their ball becomes more important than their book, when they begin to cheat on their tests. We appeal to you to turn your sons and male students on early, teach them how to read early, teach them the beauty of being black and believing in God early. But many of us have waited, and we waited almost too late to develop black boys to be men. You know what I'm getting at. America spends $2,300 on Head Start. They spend $38,000 on prison. If Reagan wanted to balance the budget, I can show you save about $36,000 per person. It's much easier to educate than it is to incarcerate. Now you raise the questions. How long do you stay in Head Start? Year? Two years is the most? How long do you stay in prison? The rest of your life? Question number one. Question number two, does Head Start work? A 19 year study documents that Head Start works, but in prison, 85% of the inmates who get released Go right back in. Yeah. But as Jesse Jackson says, we have two choices. We can either send me to Penn State or stay Penn. Oh, we shout out to choice. Biggie. Oh, that, that's where Biggie must have gotten it from. Shout out to Penn State. We are. Anyway, um, j just real quick comment. Um, this is incredible knowledge. Uh, like I said, the, the, the rate of incredible knowledge, important information, is very rapid. So hopefully you guys are keeping up. Here's one thing that I would say. At, here, here's where my data mind goes when I see something like that. Um, when I see the three rows of students, right, um, what he did before is that he took empirical data uh, and he broke it down between men and women and said, where are the women? Uh, excuse me. He said, where, where are the men? And the men are going all of these other different routes, right? So then you have one, every one man, there's almost two women, at least back in 1987. But as I talked about, the numbers are relatively similar now. He took that and then he also brought it down here and he's bringing it to uh, anecdotal data data right so he's taking three different examples of young boys my thing is is like i would like to see what he just did from a from an empirical right an aggregate standpoint as well like how often are young black boys in the third grade dropping down in scores in the seventh for me particularly specific to my life this was actually reversed for me 
I started out in the third grade, like in, my, in the third grade, I was acting out, but my parents were together and there was, it was not a happy household. Towards the seventh grade, when it was just me and my pops, <laughs> that's when I really started kicking ass. It was like around the sixth grade that I started. I wasn't getting on honor roll because I was always like a, just an average student. But um, there was like a principal's list for at least good, good behavior. But before that, I was an act out child. I was a class clown. I was that type of kid, right? You understand what I'm saying? But as I got older, I start to come around to understand the importance of discipline. And also my pops had me in other things as well, such as uh, martial arts. I did martial arts as a kid as well, which reinforced the discipline that I is a part of my fiber today. We have got to find ways to intervene. Now we have a whole workshop just on the fourth grade syndrome. I now want to ask you, what are some of the reasons you feel to explain why black students, especially black boys, were doing so well K through three, and now scores decline in the intermediate and upper grades? What explains it? Yes. The learning style changes abruptly in fourth grade from what might have been more right brain activities in the primary grades into all of a sudden all left brain activities. Okay, so a change in learning styles or, or methodology from the teacher, uh, from a holistic learning style to a left brain. Okay, very good. Any other? Yes. I think that there's a lot of rejection on the part of uh, the female teachers in the classroom. I'm and and the rejection increases with the upper grades? Why do you think it increases? Because of the students, perhaps it's his uh, natural makeup, hyperactivity, and that sort of thing. And that may be increasing. Well, it may be increasing because we're now expecting them to stay in school or stay in a chair yeah. even longer. longer. Okay. Any others mm. that contribute to this fourth grade syndrome? We have a change in learning style. We have the teacher's outlook on the student. What else? Yes. The student becomes more culturally aware and, and differs significantly from the teacher often. Okay. So the child is now becoming more aware of their culture and racial identity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Any others? The major reason you have not given yet, and maybe that's why this problem is still with us, Terry. First name is? Richard. I'm sorry, Richard. Well, the peer group starts to form and become stronger about the peer group. And that's unfortunate, Richard, uh, that you said that because as the age increases, Peer pressure is on the increase, yeah. while parental involvement is on a decrease. I don't know who tell parents when your child gets older, they need less of your time rather than more. Yeah. When I speak to Head Start parents, 80% of them are there. You, you know, let, let me let me comment on that real quick. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking in my mind. I don't want to uh, jump ahead of the video because uh, I have not reached to this point yet. Um, peer pressure is a, is, a, is an asshole. Um, it absolutely is. And depending upon maybe the school district that you're in, you know, depending upon the other kids that are in the class and how much of their family that they have in their lives, right? And they're not being raised by other kids, right? How much of the TV, you know, being a, a, a media child, a TV child, right? And you're having these images beamed into your eyes of how it is that you're supposed to perform in school, how it is that you're supposed to be treating people, how it is that you're supposed to be treating these young girls, right? Like, and then you see towards the seventh, eighth grade, somewhere around then, like, you know, the, it, it, these kids are grown up incredibly quick, right? Like, especially now. Like, this was a problem back in 1987, but especially now, right? When you can click open a Twitter and see everything on the internet at the, a drop of a, of a dime. You understand what I'm saying? So, like, when you have all of these different things, but you don't have the parental guidance, the parental controls, man, peer pressure will come at you quick and shape and mold those that not even about that life. Elementary school, 30%. High school, almost a joke. We have to work on that. That's another workshop, too, on parenting all the way through, not just in those quote unquote tender years. But the major reason, it's not on the board yet. Still looking for it. Yes, Gwen? I think, too, that young boys, and particularly young black boys, in the primary grades, they have many mother figures and they have few, very few men figures, and particularly black male figures. And I think it makes a big difference come grade four. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think it's the major reason. And let me now get my first position. I sincerely believe that only men can make boys Woo. men. Woo. Now, don't misquote me. I didn't say that a single female parent or female teacher cannot rear or educate her child. But she need not do that by herself. Oh. But she calls upon her father, her brother, an uncle, a male neighbor, a nephew, a co-worker. There needs to be some men in our children's lives. I mm. want to explain to me how a boy is going to grow up to be a man if he's never seen any. 
Mm. In order to be anything, you must see it first. Remember right. earlier workshop, and I'll go through this very quickly, from the University of Michigan, we wanted to find out what the major influence on children. We said 1950 was home, school, church, peer group, and television. And then we gave you 1980, home was still number one, peer group in a number two position, television three, school dropped down to number four, church last on the list. Let's go back to my statement. My statement said that only men can make boys men. Now let's see what blind boys are going to find men. Let's first of all look at his home. 62% of all blind children live in a single run household. Mm. There's a very good chance he would not find a man here. I'm going to hold off on the streets and drop down the television. I think it's higher now. There's more young men being raised in single parent households now. Can you name me five positive Adele blind men on television? outside the news. And you can't name Cosby because the show just started. Name me five. Outside the news? No. Outside the news. Jefferson. And you better not say George Jefferson. <laughs> ah. Very few black male role models on television. Now let's drop down to the schools. 83% of all elementary school teachers are women. 95% of all teacher aides are women. And when do men teach? After the critical fourth grade, or they're in the upper grade, or in the upper grade, or they're a PE teacher, the janitor, or the principal. Very few before the fourth grade where black boys need them the most. And lastly, the church. Most young people, men, don't, don't go to church. And the reason is we lie to them. First of all, we made Jesus Christ white. The man surely was not white. And we have a book called What Color Was Jesus to explain that. He had hair the texture of wool and feet the color of bronze. Right. But secondly, the Lord's prayer says on earth as it is in heaven. Young people and men want some action. They want some programs. If they had no programs in your church, they would see you later in heaven. As a result of not finding a man at home, few on television, few in school, and not wishing to attend church, the last place is the streets. Mm. And that's the problem. The streets do a very poor job making men. They do a better poor. job making pimps, pushers, and a few basketball players. Back. The hero, Michael Jordan, has said there were a million brothers that won his job last year in the NBA. Of this million, only 400,000 will even make it to play high school ball. Of this 400,000, only 4,000 will make it to play college ball. Of this 4,000, only 35 will go to the coveted NBA. Of this 35, only seven start. And the average life in the NBA is four years. Oh. You got a million brothers looking for seven full-time jobs that last four years. Listen, here's the thing. Um, I, I love this video. <laughs> I, love, I love this video. Um, I, I, let, guys, you let me know down in the description box down below. We are 12 minutes into this video. This is an hour-long video. If you guys want me to keep on reviewing the video, continue to give me my thoughts, I'll leave a link down in the description so you can go and you can watch the whole video for yourself as well as to gain some of the knowledge. Now, I have not gone into the video, so I can't talk to the validity of what he says into the future, but this is what I love because you're taking numbers. If you could take a young boy and show him the numbers of the the potential of you getting into this dream of nba or or any sport or like anything that is pushed to you in your eyes that you told that you should be successful with but you're not hit with the reality of how many people are actually successful within it your likelihood is extremely low meanwhile you can follow another path in life where your likelihood of success in building wealth generational wealth is extremely high extremely high and the fact of the matter is the work that it takes to be in the nba is a lot more than the work that it takes to be in a corporate america it, it's a, it's a lot it's a lot more work you understand what i'm saying it's a lot more work Woo! sheesh this is information jam-packed dr jawanza kunjufu i gotta google you my g my scholar I gotta Google you. I gotta see where you're at. I know your son's on the cover of that book. I gotta see where he's at. I, I gotta do, I gotta do more research. I feel terrible. I've, I've never heard of this of this man. This is why my Instagram was set up, guys. Keep on sending me dope clips. All right, dope information. I appreciate it. All right, let's continue to unravel this. All right, until next time, YouTube.